tell, tell you. <laughs> Terrific. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Roland McReynolds. I'm executive director of the Carolina Farm Stewardship Association. And this is an informal uh, breakout uh, discussion about the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, a uh, new USDA uh, relief program related to the coronavirus uh, pandemic uh, that uh, opened up in September. Uh, applications for this program closed on December 11th. And we're doing this little talk because um, this program is very well designed uh, to provide uh, some financial relief to a lot of small scale farms, especially selling direct, uh, food direct in local markets. Um, there's a number of resources on the CF at Carolina Farm Stewardship Association website about this program. Um, and I'm going to overview it very briefly. Uh, and then we're going to hear from some farmers who have participated in the program to get their perspective on, on uh, what it's like to go through it and, and the benefits for their farm. Uh, so uh, the way the uh, Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, or CFAP, as we're going to call it, uh, works, uh, for it, it, at least in terms of farms that are selling direct market uh, uh, products, is that uh, farms that in that grew crops that are eligible, which pretty much includes all fruits and vegetables, and um, as well as uh, all uh, cut flowers, nursery crops, um, as well as tobacco, um, uh, goat's milk. Uh, honey, uh, maple sap, just a, a large range of products uh, that, are, that are covered by this uh, program. Uh, for farmers who grew those crops in 2019, they are, who have suffered impacts on their business in 2020 due to the uh, coronavirus um, uh, pandemic, are eligible to apply for funding from USDA. Uh, and are eligible to receive about 10%, a check for about 10% of their revenues on those eligible crops from 2019. Um, so for instance, uh, if you grew fruits and vegetables and cut flowers that you sold through direct markets or sold to restaurants or sold to local food hubs or any sort of, of um, you know, business, uh, basically you, or have the opportunity to tally up the revenue that you made selling those products. You go, uh, there's an application uh, at your local FSA office. Uh, they will help you uh, fill out that application. Uh, you submit uh, in the, the, uh, the, the, a claim as far as those revenues. Uh, and then there's, there are other, there's a few other paperwork and, and forms to fill out. Uh, but you submit that information and your county uh, farm service agency office reviews your application. And if they sign off on it, your, your, process, your application is sent through uh, to the federal government uh, for payment. Now, we hosted a workshop on this subject just a little bit earlier today at, at the Sustainable Agriculture Conference. And a recording of that uh, workshop, as well as a webinar that we've done about the particulars of the application, um, uh, will all be available. So we're not going to talk too much about those details uh, at this point, uh, except to, to, for, um, for our guests to tell us uh, what the experience was like for them. Um, so joining us today to talk about their experience applying for CFAP, uh, we have uh, the folks at Split Acre Farm, Lizbeth and Joe, and we have uh, Red, uh, Clay from Redbud Organic Farm. Um, both of these uh, farms have successfully applied for and received funding from this program um, and uh, just wanted to share their experience about what it was like and what, you know, how easy or hard it is to actually, uh, for small farms who may or may not have ever worked with the USDA before, to actually get access to this program and receive these important funds. Um, so I guess I would love to start off with uh, with Lizbeth and Joe, if uh, you don't mind telling us a little bit about what you, what you learned about the program. Um, sure. Um, so I guess I first heard about it through your newsletter uh, from the CFSA, um, and from there I I tried doing the application online, but I had a, a difficult time getting my Ident identification verified by their system. Yep. 
Um, so I put it off like a week or so <laughs> and uh, just, you know, called them, you know, one Monday, the FSA, and they were very eager to, you know, help me out. They didn't really tell me, you know, I, they, they wanted to, um, or I, I asked them to meet in person, you know, because I thought it'd be easier that way. Yeah. And they just said, come on by. And uh, yeah, later that day, I went and met with them. Uh, they didn't really tell me to bring anything, but I knew that I needed some sort of proof that I farmed the year prior. Right. So I, I brought my, uh, my 2019 tax returns right. and just an informal sh uh, sheet from QuickBooks that I, you know, keep up with through the years or, you know, um, and that was pretty much all they needed from me. And they essentially just filled out the entire application for me with me standing right there. And I just signed off on forms for them. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Uh, I also had to bring a, or I had a check with me too that they could void so that they could direct yes. deposit it. So the money into. Um, but yeah, they were super helpful, very eager to help. Uh, they knew what they were doing. So and I trusted them. Right. Uh, and yeah, it was all very quick too. Cool. So let me ask a couple of questions. Um, uh, I, I mean, I think first of all, the, the point you made about bringing a cancel check is a really important one. They really want to make these payments by direct deposit. They do not want to cut checks. They want to actually put it direct in your bank account. And so you do have to sign a form authorizing them to make the direct deposit. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's, if you don't do that, you may end up waiting quite a while for a payment. Um, so, so that is one of the forms that you have to fill out is this direct deposit payment uh, or authorization. Were there other additional forms, um, you know, eligibility documents that you all had to go through or that the FSA folks helped you with? Um, not really. I mean, it helped that I had a Schedule F as part of my, as part of my tax returns. And um, um, and they, they asked us a little bit more about like our, the percentage of what crops you grow versus vegetables versus livestock versus flowers. Yep. So we had to break that down, but it's, it's a pretty loose, uh, you know, percentage that we had to give. Okay. Um, so that's about as specific as we got Okay. with them. And um, are you all organized as a sole proprietorship? Yeah, Okay. Uh, we are. Okay, so you, you're operating under a social security number. Yeah, that, that's okay. correct. So I was giving out my social security number. Right. As, right. as we went through this. Did you all already have an FSA number? Uh, no. So that was something that they helped with uh, after we got all our forms, you know, you know, uh, entered. They, they gave us a farm number and we're, I guess, officially a farm now. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a really important point that um, you, know, you don't have to be on in the USDA files right now to be right. able to take advantage of this program. Uh, but you will be once you have taken advantage of this program. I have a question. Um, yeah. Do you have to, I mean, is this open to any farmer that's that's farming and that, or, uh, or do you have to prove that something that COVID has reduced your income or can you just sign up and do this? Uh, we didn't have to prove anything as far as impact from COVID. Um, it's 10%. That's a pretty good amount. If, you know, like if somebody that's been doing it for a while and they're making like 60,000 a year or something and yeah, I, mean, it's, um, I think it's, it's a general kind of like a subsidy for farmers in USA or something. Yeah. Yeah. We, they really didn't bring up COVID at all, I guess, throughout that the pr process. Yeah. I'm just telling my sister about it. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the premise of the program is just, we, we know agriculture's been hurt by this. Um, so, uh, you know, the, 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 um, 
that the real innovation of this this new version of CFAP is that they are not requiring you to show how many bushels of corn you had in 2019 or how many head of cattle you had to cull in 2020 because of the pandemic. They're just saying, show us what you sold of these eligible crops and and you will get that payment of, of this uh, 10%. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you mentioned also the online application, um, which is possible for folks to do uh, if you are farming as a sole proprietorship under your social security number. If you are organized as an LLC or some corporate structure, then you can't apply online uh, and you, you must apply through your local FSA office. Um, but in, in any event, it's a really good idea to call your local FSA office first and, you know, let them know that you're interested in this program. And it, the administration is going to vary from every, from, you know, in every single county office may be a little bit different. So it's really important to get that conversation going right off the bat with your local uh, farm services agency office before you get going. Um, Clay, let, let me turn it to you and uh, you tell us a, a little bit about uh, your experience um, in, uh, in terms of going through this process. Sure. Um, so um, our staff is very familiar in terms of um, the helpfulness of the FSA agent uh, or staff. So I saw the uh, email or an email from you Roland, about the program and so I decided just to call the FSA office. Um, we do have a farm number with them, but I have not uh, really had any interaction with them since um, 2010 or something like that. So it's been a while. So, but they, we were in their system and we did have a number. And um, I talked with the uh, technician there and um, we talked about the program and he said, it will be easier if I fill these forms out for you and I'll mail them to you and you can sign them and fill in the financial information, uh, which we did. So I waited uh, three or four days. I got a packet in the mail and he had filled out all the forms. Uh, There's one about uh, the conservation plan and wetland and that sort of thing. Um, and then there was one about the um, our sales for last year. So um, I filled all that in and then I sent, um, I mailed it, uh, it didn't mail it back, I took it back because they have a, they don't, they don't want to see anybody face to face in Alabama County because of COVID. So they have a drop box outside their door. So I took uh, the forms back that were signed, um, a copy of our uh, Schedule F from our 2019 federal tax returns, uh, we keep a log of our monthly sales, so I just made a copy of uh, the 12 months of the year, and uh, also our um, organic certification document lists all the crops that we grow and sell, and so those matched up with the list of things, um, and uh, we send a harvest, one of the typical harvest record for a market sometime in back in August. And um, two weeks later, we had um, a deposit into our checking account that was just slightly over 10% of our sales for 2019. It was just, I was just astounded that it worked that well. So anyway, it was a great experience. Excellent, excellent. So uh, that bringing up the records is, is an important point. And, and Joe, you talked about bringing in the QuickBooks. Um, you know, certainly, and it's certainly important to be aware of in terms of this process um, that either before they issue a check or maybe sometime in the future, uh, your local office may want to spot check uh, the, the, um, uh, the awards that they've made. So they, they or, or that they are looking to make. So, you know, you may have to share documentation, even if you don't do it initially when you apply, uh, they, they, you know, you should have that documentation on hand to show, just like uh, we've heard here, um, you know, what your sales were and that you are a farm, you know, that you do have production records. They're not going to require you to show 
you know, every, you know, how, how many flowers you sold last year or how many pounds of potatoes, but they are going to want to see proof of, and, and things like proof of your expenses to show that, yes, you actually bought in, in materials, you brought, bought seeds, you brought soil amendments, um, and that that's, uh, you know, to, to demonstrate that, yes, you really are farming. Uh, and that you really, you know, did did make these investments. Um, uh, so so it's really important to have have that sort of thing on hand. Uh, they aren't going to want you to just say, oh well, I think that I made X number of dollars, and so that's what I'm writing down here. They they do want to know that that uh, you've got some way to substantiate at least some of it. But they're not going to go down to the penny uh, to really try to uh, you know uh, uh, do do an audit. Um, in, unless, you know, there, there's a serious problem. Um, the, the, the documents, are, you, you talked about the conservation compliance document as well, Clay. Was that something that they already had on file for you and that you, or that they filled out for you or, or what exactly? It was a two-page document and uh, they filled it out for me. Okay. They never asked me any questions about it. They just filled it out. All I did was sign where they, at the highlighted spot on the uh, bottom of the page. Okay, okay. Yeah, but we've, you know, we've done that. We've been certified organic for 12 years. Right, so, right. Yeah, we were okay with all that. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, it, that, that, that form, which is the, uh, I believe the AD 1026, is something that you may have already had on file for your, for your farm that they were drawing from. Uh, Joe, Lizbeth, I don't, I don't know if, if um, they talked with you specifically about the conservation compliance um, document in particular. Uh, I believe they did. Okay. Um, she she ran through a lot of documents with me, you know, in that in our face to face meeting. Yeah, um, I, I don't recall exactly what all of them were, but th that sounds familiar. Yeah, uh, 801026 is you just got to prove that you didn't make a million dollars on average last three years, right? Or something like that? Uh, no, no. The, the AD 1026 is where basically you have to prove that you're not farming on a wetland or that you're not farming uh, or that if you're farming on highly erodible land, that you're not letting the, the land erode too much. Um, right, right. It's, I, I, I remember that form. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right. There, there is also I can't I, I won't remember the number of the form, but you will have to if you if if your uh, family's adjusted gross income is greater than nine hundred thousand dollars a year, you are not eligible for this program. So you would not be so so you do have to fill out a form to verify that indeed your family's adjusted gross income was not over nine hundred thousand um, dollars. And, and if it was. I'd love to introduce you to our development director here. Yeah. Say, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that, that is, sorry, go ahead, Clay. Form for, in terms of adjusted gross income is uh, form CCC nine forty one. Nine forty one, excellent. Thank you for yeah. that, Clay. Um, and I also think maybe you've got a CCC nine oh one or a nine oh two there as well. Uh, that that again is just sort of verifying in the in, in the USDA yeah. system that you have a farm. Yeah, some of those forms are like yeah. kind of like they you have to fill them out so you can get them on record. So then the FSA agents will look; they can look back and see that so you don't double dip. Yes, exactly, exactly, uh, and that's that is an important thing, you know. Um, uh, uh, that is to say that this, this money runs with the farm, not with the individuals who own the farm. So the individuals who own the farm share in the payment. They don't each get their own payments equal to 10% of what the farm did in the Right. Mm -hmm. um, other, other things that were noteworthy for you all about the process? Um, I mean, I, going back to the the conservation type yeah. forms. Um, it really helped for us that, so we're on a lease, on leased land okay. that had been prior registered with the FSA. Gotcha. So I think that was also helpful yes. in our, I guess our legitimacy of the whole application. Yeah. Um, they were able to look up, you know, our farm and their system and we were there and um, 
they eventually registered our actual farm business onto that land during that okay. uh, meeting. Oh, that's great. Right. That's great. Right. So, and in typical cases, you know, um, if, if you're farming land that has been in agriculture for a long time, there is, in, in, or and especially if you're farming land that used to be farmed in tobacco, there is probably an AD 1026 on file for that land already. You have to file a new one with this application, uh, at least if, if you if you haven't filed one for your farm. That's part of the the um, technicalities of this program. But that those past records allow them to complete the form or tell you what the correct answer, what the answers are on your form that that are relevant for your application. So again, FSA folks are really important uh, resource uh, to help um, get get the answers to this. And you know if you at home who are looking at applying for this and are uh, have reached out to your FSA office or you do reach out to your FSA office and you get some resistance or uncertainty um, or people telling you that this program doesn't exist or uh, that you're not eligible, please email us at policy at carolinafarmstewards.org uh, and let us know that experience because uh, we definitely want to make sure that this is something that is being equitably uh, enforced across uh, North and South Carolina, um, but it, it, this is absolutely as as um, as you're hearing from uh, from these farmers in person. This is a real thing, and uh, if, if the FSA offices should not be giving you a, an unreasonable hard time just because they've never met you before uh, when you're applying for this program. Um, what else, uh, Clay? Anything else noteworthy for you about the uh, the experience? Uh, I was just surprised at how uh, easy it was to apply, and um, how quickly the uh, payment came through, and all that. So, um, so anyway, and hopefully they will uh, do this again next year, maybe. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, and it is it is also noteworthy that the, the money for this program is, is essentially coming from the USDA's own little bank um, that is, on, it really, the Commodity Credit Corporation really does kind of work like a bank. They are printing this money uh, to, to give to you. So it's, it is something that um, uh, 14 billion has been set aside for this uh, round of applications for, for the CFAP program. Um, and yes, uh, hopefully that is something that they will extend um, in the future. Uh, the, the deadline for applications is December 11th. Now you don't have to have all of the eligibility yeah. forms and records and documents turned in by December 11th, but you have to have your application form turned in by December 11th in order to have a chance to, to uh, win a payment under this program. Um, Mariana, is if you any questions that um, that you've heard from our members that you you can think of that um, uh, might might be helpful for um, explaining any of this? I can't think of any at the moment, Roland. You know. Okay, terrific. Um, well, I uh, I think the underlying message here is that this money is out there. It's available. It's not real hard to get. If, you, if you've got reasonable records um, of your 2019 sales. And I should also say that if you're a new farmer in 2020, you didn't sell any, any products in 2019, you can still be eligible for this program. You, you, they, they, uh, for far, farms that did not grow crops in 2019, but did grow crops in 2020, you can be eligible for a payment of up to about 10% of your 2020 sales of eligible crops. Um, uh, but so, so it's, that is not a barrier for, for brand new farmers this year either. Um, so I just uh, really want to thank Lizbeth and Joe and Clay uh, for you all sharing your story here with us. Um, and thank you, Will William, for being here and, and offering some additional uh, insight about FSA processes. Um, like I say, we have lots more resources on the CFSA website about how to apply for this program what the specific paperwork requirements are for eligibility, which specific crops are eligible. Uh, but please, if you are, are in a small farm that's been selling direct and especially selling fruits, vegetables, flowers, 
niche pastured livestock like turkeys or ducks or rabbits. Um, th those are all crops that are eligible for this program and CFSA strongly encourages farmers to take a good look at this program and uh, get a chance for the sort of uh, coronavirus uh, relief funding uh, that you deserve for your hard work as uh, to feed and uh, our, your neighbors and our communities. That uh, wraps up our little talk. Thank you all very much for being here and uh, hope this is helpful. Take care. Oh, good. Good. Thank you, Rowan. All right. Well, I'm stopping the recording now. <laughs>